Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here, and I am back again with another Creative Cow tutorial. And in our ongoing look at Avid Media Composer, we're going to continue our discussion about capturing. And you'll remember in the last tutorial, we were talking about the capture setting, and we sort of went off onto a tangent and actually looked at the capture tool or the digitize tool. Well, in this lesson, what we're going to do is we're going to bring it back, and I'm going to talk about logging, which I briefly mentioned at the end of the last tutorial, and then we're going to get in and actually look at the important capture settings that you're going to want to make sure you set before you start all of your digitizing. Okay, short introduction, let's just get into Avid Symphony, and let's get started. Okay, so let's Alt-Tab into Avid Symphony. Now, we're going to talk about logging first, so we're obviously going to need to get into capture mode. But before we get into capture mode, let's open a bin to capture to. Now, I already have a bin called, appropriately enough, capture bin. And once I have the bin open, a few ways to get into capture mode. The one way that I always get in, which is the way I recommend to you to get in, is to use the shortcut Control and 7 on Windows, Command and 7 on the Mac. A couple other ways to get into capture mode. We can simply right-click in the bin and say, go to capture mode. Or, of course, we can navigate to Tools, and we can simply come down to Capture Mode. Now, again, I said I'm going to use the shortcut Control and 7 on the keyboard. What's going to happen is, is that once I go into Capture Mode, now, because I happen to be in Log Mode, what I'm going to do is just switch over to Capture Mode here for one second. And let's just do that again, because I want to show you, because I don't actually have a camera or deck hooked into my computer right now, if I hit Control and 7, normally the first thing that happens is, is that I'm told that there's no input device. Now, you saw that when I originally switched over to Capture Mode, and I can just do it just like this. And what would happen is, is that a little window would appear and say that there's no video signal present. But that's okay. You'll see that what's going to happen up here, once I turn the video tracks on, is I'm now told that there is no input signal present, which is fine for the purposes of what we're doing. I'm simply going to say, okay, because what we want to do is we don't want to capture we just want to log. This is a great way for producers to get in and organize bins, organize clips before you actually get into your edit session. So to log these clips is actually very easy. The first thing we need to do is to switch back into login mode. And we do that simply by using the capture log toggle button right up here at the top of the capture tool. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to switch into login mode. Now something that's important to keep in mind when you're going to be logging clips, and that is that there's two types of tapes we're going to be dealing with. Draw frame tapes, and non-drop frame tapes. And what's important to also keep in mind is that once you assign a tape to be logged, what's going to happen is, is that Symphony or Media Composer is going to remember whether that tape is drop or non-drop. And you cannot switch that tape without actually going in and creating a new tape called 001DF for drop frame, 001NDF for non-drop frame. So how do we actually tell Symphony what mode we want to digitize in, non-drop or drop? Well, you'd actually think that it would be in the capture settings, but it's not. What we're going to do is head on over to the settings, and we're actually going to come down to the deck preferences. You're going to see inside deck preferences, the very first option we have is when the deck contains no tape or drop frame cannot be detected, set the timecode to non-drop. Now, in most cases, this defaults to drop, but I always like to log in non-drop because that is how I record with my camera. You'll see the next option we have is to allow assemble editing and crash recording for digital cut. Now, we're going to get to digital cuts in later tutorials. You'll see that also as a deck preference, we have the stop key, pause the deck. We can shuttle, which will hold the speed. Now, what does that mean? Well, I'm just going to move the deck preferences out of the way for one second. Right down here at the bottom of the capture tool, you'll see I actually have the shuttle tool right here. If I was to take this and I had a camera or deck hooked up, if I was to drag over to about here to fast forward and let go, if I had the shuttle hold speed option selected, that shuttle bar would stay right there and the tape would continue to digitize. I don't like working like that. That's why I always leave this deselected. You'll see I can stop any pause decks when quitting. I can pull the deck during digital cut. And I can also relax coincident point detection. Now, the question is, what exactly does that mean? Well, you know what? If you know what that means, you can feel free to drop me a line at kevinpmcauliffe at gmail.com because, to be perfectly honest, I never have that checked because in 15 years of editing the Media Composer slash Symphony, I've never turned it on. So I'm going to leave that as off because, like I said, I've never needed it and I've captured from just about every deck you could ever possibly imagine. And you'll see down here at the bottom, we can also add capture offsets for DV capturing if you happen to be doing that. What I'm going to do now is simply say OK. And by making sure that those preferences are set correctly, now I'm going to be logging in non-drop frame. So let's get this set up to actually log. 
the first thing I'm going to need to do is to get in and actually assign some channels to be logged. Well, normally what you're going to do when you log is actually select video audio 1 and audio 2. What I'm going to do is just jump down for a little bit. You'll see as far as bin goes, if I drop it down, I only have one option, the capture bin. Well, that's because if I head back over here to my bins, I only have the capture bin open. If I open up the Learn Media Composer bin, I'm just going to drag it over here, you'll see now under bin, I have two options, capture bin and the Learn Media Composer bin. And obviously, depending on what bin I have selected, that's where those clips are going to go when I log or when I capture. Now for me, I don't like the confusion of accidentally logging or capturing to the wrong bin, so I normally only leave one bin open when I'm digitizing or logging. You'll see resolution is next. I only have one option based on the project settings that I have created. And last but certainly not least, we need to assign a tape to this log that we're going to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to navigate right down here to tape name. I'm going to click on it and Symphony is going to say, well, hold on a second. The deck is empty offline or is not turned on. Do I want to associate a tape with the deck anyways? I'm simply going to say yes and let's create a new tape and I'm going to call this Kevin's logging tape. I'm going to say OK, and now I'm ready to log a few clips, so let's do that. What I'm going to do here is I'm just going to punch in the first clip starting, oh, let's say one hour, just like such. Now, you'll remember for me to add those double zeros in, is as easy as hitting period on the numeric pad. What I'm going to do is instead of adding an out point, I know this clip's going to be about 10 seconds long, so I'm just simply going to punch in 10 seconds. And let's give this clip a name. I'm just going to call it Kevin's Clip Number One. I'm going to say log, and you'll see now that that clip has appeared inside of my bin. What I'm also going to want to do here is I'm just going to resave this view as clips because I'm happy with the layout. I'll just replace it, and you'll see now that I know that that clip starts at the one hour mark. It ends at one hour and 10 seconds. The duration is 10 seconds. It doesn't have a drive assigned to it because it's not digitized yet, but I do know what tape that's come from. So let's actually just log a couple more clips here. I'm just going to call this awesome clip number two, and we'll have this one go from 010010, and maybe we'll have this go for 20 seconds. We'll just log our clip there. There we go. It appears in our bin. And last but certainly not least, we'll have excellent clip number three. And let's give it the starting time code of, I don't know, 010040, and we'll have this one go for 15 seconds. And I'm simply going to say log. So we've gone through, we've logged all of our clips. What's also important is as soon as you're done logging, always hit Control and S, Command and S for all my Mac friends out there, to save that bin. Now the next big question, we're ready to rebatch capture these clips. Now that we've logged them, how do we actually do that? No problem. What I'm going to do is hit Control and A on Windows, Command and A on the Mac. Now for me and my shortcuts, I have F2 mapped on my keyboard to be batch capture. But if you want to batch capture these clips, you can also do it if you don't have it mapped by simply navigating up to clip and navigating right down here to batch capture. Now, of course, this begs the next question. I'm probably going to want to set some settings for my capture and my batch captures. How do I do that? Well, it's actually very easy. Let me show you. What we're going to do is we're obviously going to navigate up to our settings. We're going to come down to capture settings. I'm going to double click on capture settings. There's really three main categories that we're going to deal with right now inside of the capture settings. That's the general settings, the batch settings, and the DV HDV options. You'll see under the general settings, the very first option we have is to stop the deck after the capture or pause the deck after the capture. I normally like to pause the deck. That way, if there's any loop through, I know I'm not going to get any feedback in my edit suite. Next option, pre-roll method, best available. Normally the best thing to stick with, but you'll see you can get in and you have actually two choices to choose from. You have time code and control track. Now, obviously by choosing best available, that's going to choose the best of all the worlds. Now, why would you want to use control track over time code? Capturing via control track is a great way for you to get in and rebatch capture clips that may start right after a time code break that in most cases would be impossible to rebatch capture. This is how you're going to do it very quickly and very easily. You'll see the next option we have is to force unique clip names. We can activate the bin window after capture, basically just meaning once your capture is done, that that bin is going to become active. Now, I can't click on it because obviously I have the capture settings open, but you get what I mean. Next option, spacebar stops capture. We can obviously capture across timecode breaks. We can stop the capture if a bad frame is detected and we can ignore detected media read errors if we wanted to, but in most cases, I like to know about those. 
You'll see next, capture a single frame of video only, not what we want to do, so we'll leave that deselected. We'll want Media Composer to ask us before discarding the canceled clip, and this next one is a big one. What's going to happen if I have this next option checked to ask for a name when a new tape is seen? Basically what that means is that if I've been digitizing, 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 or logging, 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 all of a sudden I realize, you know what, I'm done this tape, I've got everything I need off it, let's switch tapes. As soon as I hit eject on that deck and I put a new tape in, Media Composer is immediately going to say, hold on a second, you've put a new tape in, give me a name for that tape. This way you don't accidentally start logging clips with the wrong tape name. That's the last thing that you're going to want to do. Now, if you happen to have a client monitor, you can also have Media Composer or Symphony display the incoming video in the client monitor, and you can have it pause the deck while logging. Now, let's take a look at the batch settings that we have here as well. First choice we have, do you want to optimize for disk space or optimize for batch speed? Well, these days, disk space is not really too relevant because, you know, you can get 2 terabyte, 3 terabyte, 4 terabyte drive arrays, and you can be digitizing just tons and tons of media. What we want to do is always optimize for batch speed. Another great favorite setting of mine is if a drive happens to be getting very full, you can have Media Composer or Symphony automatically switch to the emptiest drive if the current one is full. You can have it rewind the tape when it's finished. It can eject the tape when it's finished. And what I always like to do is log errors to the console and to continue capturing. Now to get into the console, very simple, Control and 6 for all you Windows users, Command and 6 for all you Mac users. We're going to get more into the console in a later tutorial. Now these next four options are exceptionally important. The very first one, capture the tracks logged for each clip. You'll remember, I'll just slide my capture settings over here. When I first logged these clips, I came in and I set video, audio one, and audio two when I logged. With this selected, because I had those three channels selected when I logged the clips, that's what it's gonna capture. If I deselect that, what's gonna happen is, is that once I select these clips to redigitize, Whatever I have selected in the capture tool, when I hit batch capture, so let's just say I have video only selected, that's all that'll be recaptured. So that's just something to keep in mind. It's great if you realize, oh, you know what, I logged all those clips, but I forgot to add the audio. You know what, I can actually do that while I'm digitizing. Now the same applies for the sample rate. If you happen to log the sample rate, you can use that, or you can have the sample rate captured as whatever you want. Same with the audio bit depth. And same with the video compression log for each clip. Now, video compression is obviously the resolution. Now, in this project, not really too relevant. I only had one resolution to choose from. But depending on the type of capture card you have, you might have 5, 6, 7, 8, 10, 15 different resolutions to choose from. So this obviously gets to be very important. You may have accidentally logged them as, you know, HDV 720p, but you realize you want to digitize them as... DNX 145, even though we're obviously talking about two different types of formats. We're talking about 1080 versus 720p, but I'm just using it as an example. You might just want to get in and log it as whatever, and then worry about it after the fact. So that's why you'll notice, really, only the captured tracks logged for each clip is selected. This way you can get in and change the resolution right before you capture. Now I said really the last section you're going to want to worry about in here is the DV and HDV options. I know that that's the way most people that are watching this tutorial are going to be capturing. You'll see that we can get in and add DV and HDV scene extraction to add markers, add subclips, or add both. And you can even enable detection of small timecode breaks. Okay, so in our next tutorial, we're going to take a look at composer settings. And we're also going to get in and take a look at the preview and record windows. And you're going to see how you're going to be able to get as much information as possible, more information than you thought you might ever need out of these two windows very quickly and very easily. So if you have any questions, you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can send them to Kevin P. McAuliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.